Hi, Uma. Hi, sir. How are you? Uh, and uh, how are you feeling today? <laughs> I am relieved that I do not have to appear for the ongoing prelims exam. <laughs> right. I'm also still overwhelmed by the response I've been getting because of the rank. Yeah, yeah. It is very overwhelming, right? You've got rank three and it is... You would have never imagined, right, that my name will be on the third or from the top. <laughs> Forget rank three. Like two days before the result, I was in a complete panic mode, wondering if I'll get any rank. So <laughs> rank three was like unimaginable. And the moment I saw the PDF, I went to search for my name or roll number. I was going to type, but then I immediately saw my name because it was right there. Yeah. At rank three. And then I started asking people if it was fake, fake PDF. <laughs> <laughs> you so were, you could not even believe the fact that your name was there, right? <laughs> no. Your heart, I'm very sure your heart stops for a moment when you see your name in that list, yes, right? Because yes. it's very unbelievable. Definitely. Yeah. The first thing I did after I saw the result was I cried uncontrollably. <laughs> and <laughs> somebody died. Like I cried really <laughs> loud for next three, four minutes. Oh, <laughs> okay. All your emotions scared. came out. Yeah. yeah. Where were you? You were at home? You were with your parents? Yes. How I, was I was at home. I was with my mother. Uh, we hmm. were like, uh, waiting and like, somebody told us that the result was out and then check the website or something. So we were checking the website. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, it's been nerve wracking, right? Because everyone is expecting something from you. And then, and you told me that this is where if this was your fifth attempt. So definitely it must have been much more stakes were online for you, right? Yeah, yeah. So tell me a little bit more about that. So how did you decide to write the exam a few years back? Like what was it that made you think I will appear for this exam? And what has it been your journey? Because, I, you know, a lot of aspirants fail a lot of failures, but they are not able to cope up with it or they are not able to continue. Like you have persevered four or five years, right? So I want to know about that. So tell me something from the start till now. So, uh, it was my father who initially motivated me towards the civil services. He's from the police department. So, from a young age, he used to come home and then keep talking about what the uh, collector was doing or what the uh, SP of that district was doing. You know, did this, did that. You know, always he painted a picture of uh, civil services being a platform to do great things. So, he was always there at the back of my head. Uh, so, I did my graduation from IIT Hyderabad in uh, civil engineering. So until uh, final year, I was not entirely sure about what should I do going next. But then towards the end of the sem last semester, I decided, okay, uh, you know, I want to prepare for civil services. So I did not appear for any placements and I graduated and then started preparing. Mm. So, uh, but then I didn't know anything about the exam or anything for that matter. But then I told myself that going to Delhi will solve all my problems. Mm -hmm. So I went to Delhi with absolutely no knowledge, no understanding, no strategy whatsoever. And then quite naturally, I got overwhelmed within a short span of time. And then I found my stay there was like not that useful. So I came back. And by in this period, my first attempt passed. Somehow I cleared prelims. I do not know how in the first attempt itself. Mm -hmm. And then without understanding anything, I started writing mains. I did not clear. But then again, I was in the cycle. Second attempt also passed that way. So by and large, my first two attempts, I had no understanding of the exam. I never like tried to understand. So mm -hmm. I failed. But then uh, somehow I started to uh, understand the exam a little bit, focus on the syllabus, previous year's question. And that's how I uh, attempted my third attempt. This time I cleared uh, mains and I appeared for the interview. This was with geography option. And one thing I noticed was all three times my option scores were very low with the geography. Uh, and then I failed to clear the third attempt, final list. But then I went ahead and appeared for prelims, thinking I would clear it. When I failed again, I couldn't clear prelims okay. in my fourth attempt. Hmm. And now I did not know what to do. It was hmm. really, really demotivating. And like, I absolutely had like no idea what to do. So I started uh, working a little bit just to tell myself that I can do something. You know, I'm not entirely useless. 
uh, but uh, with the help of my family they asked me to you know just try to learn from your mistake or reevaluate yourself so i tried to take advantage of the time i was getting for the first time because i was not appear appearing for the mains i had like good amount of time and then i thought maybe this is time where i it's like to change my option since it was not working so i shifted to anthropology and i this time i was very sure i was not going to make any mistake that i did in the past attempts so i studied everything from scratch i made my notes and then i practiced a lot and that's how i appeared for the fifth time and this time so it's my first uh, mains with the anthropology hmm. and then i cleared so i think i made small small changes throughout the period so other attempts yeah so that's quite an amazing, that's quite uh, an incredible journey you've had so i want to know something more in detail so after first second third attempts you were improving right yes definitely because you were seeing some kind of improvement so what happened do you think and i think aspirants would like to know you know what happened in the fourth attempt that you actually could not clear the prelims was it maybe fatigue or was it maybe something else you know i want to know that uh, so i think uh, it was the sadness from not clearing the third attempt so there mm. was a little time after the result was declared on the prelims exam okay right so okay i yeah. was not in the right state of mind mm. to go and appear for the exam i actually lo- uh, like my marks were low on csat not paper 1 Okay, okay. CSAT and CSAT also, I think, became suddenly difficult, yeah. right? Like some, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So I was for some reason very slow on that day of the exam, mm. and it was even more demotivating because it was CSAT, and I am from a yeah. engineering background. Yeah, you you were civil engineer, so <laughs> <laughs> you must have been shocked afterwards, you know. Uh, but That's... but in hindsight, not clearing that prelims was the best thing that happened to me in the yeah. last five years. Yeah. 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 So you saw, I think that failure you converted into success later on, right? Because you, instead of going back to geography, yes, which was not making you clear the exam because of which you were getting lower on marks. I think anthropology really helped you. It refreshed your mind also. Yes. And uh, so did you get good marks in anthropology or like, or yes. good, like decent marks, I guess. Uh, so it, in geography, the highest I ever got was around 240. So this time uh-huh. in anthropology, I got 293. Wow. 50 marks jump, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a big jump. And I'm sure you got good marks in your GS also everywhere because you have a rank three. But that's, that's quite interesting, right? So I think aspirants should learn from you that Number one, uh, they should not be fearful to change when it is not working, right? I guess this is what your lesson is that first two times it didn't work. So you decided to think, what do I do? What do I do? How do I change? So pivoting is very important in life, changing. And the second thing you did was that you did not get completely bogged down by the fourth attempt. Yes. Which was, despite being an engineer, not getting marks in seats, that can be very demotivating, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that so are you the oldest person in your house? Like, are you the uh, I mean, sibling wise? Or? I am. So my so, younger brother is in the hmm. engineering services. Oh, I, he's already in IES. Okay, okay, great. So you are from a family of civil servants. So what about your father? I want to know a little bit more about him. What background he has? So my father is in the police department. He's currently working as a, a superintendent of police of a district called Nara in Pet, from where I prepared. Oh. Okay, okay, great, great. So, and so he he joined from the state services and then got promoted into IPS, right? Wow, so that's so that's a lot of motivation, right? Your father has seen it all. Yes. And then got, because um, coming into services in the state services and then getting promoted is a very difficult thing. You know, a lot of aspirants might not know it. And yes. it takes a lot of courage, a lot of hard work. Yes. So you must have seen that all throughout your life. And then now you are going to IS. So that's amazing. So your first... Uh, service choice is IS, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. So you you are you excited to work in your home state? <laughs> uh, frankly, uh, I was ready to go to even Tawang in Arunachal Pradesh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, I, <laughs> because I, you were like, whatever, you know, kuch yeah. jai. <laughs> So I'm excited to work anywhere. I'm just lucky and grateful that I get to live close to my parents. Yeah, yeah, that's very nice. And you're lucky in the sense that you will know the problems of the state. You have right. been brought the up there. Yes. Yeah, the language is a very big deal because if you're going to some other state, you have to learn the language, which is very difficult. That's very good. So I was reading your DAF actually. I came across it and I saw that you love cooking, 
right you like to do cooking or do you make other people's cook <laughs> no 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 i love to cook that's a stress buster for me I... great great so and uh, something interesting was that you want you learn how to you know the know how of indian cuisine like the different things so tell me something interesting about that because i also love to eat <laughs> i also use i am not getting time to cook but i think it's a good stress buster you're right but i would like to know from you something interesting about the indian cuisines just um, so just like a random what fact what i like to do is i like to experiment with ingredients and then see how you know changing one ingredient what it does to the overall texture and flavor of the food Uh, for instance currently i'm working with millets my objective is to uh, adapt millets to traditional recipes like millet biryani mm. millet pulao or uh, you know millet kheer millet laddu mm. so that we can uh, eat millets more otherwise yeah. eating millets can be a little bit i mean they're not like easily eatable like yeah. this is hard to eat millets but they're very tasty you know if you oh, right, get right. used so to them they're very tasty so i know high fiber high very so when i came to bharat in north india you don't get millets that much maybe yes. sometimes bajra and all but when i came to maharashtra in maharashtra there is a very good tradition of eating millets people eat local millets and the, they are so tasty you know and now i have switched so much to millets and it's yes. good for your health also so in telangana is it millets are very common or is it less common because rice is biryani right. and rice and all that yeah so millets were traditionally consumed like variety of millets mm. were consumed in telangana but eventually they got replaced by rice but mm. we still have a number of dishes millet dishes which are again okay. now becoming popular like ragi sankriti jonna sankriti these are all typical okay. telangana uh, millet dishes telangana millet dishes which are now getting popular again they're coming back to fashion that's yeah. nice to hear that's nice to you know so uh you know i think overall i see like i feel like you have developed a good personality also in the last you know few years so you worked on upsc but you have not stopped doing your hobbies so i want yes. to know from you, you know for aspirants who are let's say who have already done two three attempts how can they balance that how can they get out of that fatigue and mind because it's very difficult you know year right. after year year after year so i want to what did you do did you do anything or how did you handle that so uh after two or three attempts you will realize that you don't need a lot of time to study you can still manage it, you know by mm. putting in you can only put in certain number of hours mm. maximum 7 to 8 hours per day beyond that like the productive work doesn't happen anything mm. beyond that so i understood this so i started focusing on other things so i started learning badminton and playing badminton uh, regularly i was always trying to learn something new so after my uh, interview this year i enrolled myself in karate classes so oh, last wow. year the last year i yeah. failed i enrolled in a uh, badminton classes and then i uh. started learning badminton and like i said i love to cook and then i thought to give it a structure like i give a structure yeah. to my hobby so i decided it will be healthy food with millets but mm. then also the flavor of traditional food. so i started experimenting with this and i also practice yoga regularly so i do part okay. in yoga uh, uh, tournaments and things like oh, that oh really okay so you're serious about yoga <laughs> yeah uh, so all these things and help me see that there is life beyond upsc and that i can be happy in with these things with the little with things this. that i do on a daily basis yeah and i had an excellent support system like be it my family or my friends i also had some friends who cleared the exam in the mm. previous attempt and they were kind enough to guide me throughout in pinpoint the mistakes i was doing so whatever they said i took it very seriously and mm. you know i worked on it like uh, by writing more whatever i could uh, yeah my... so this i try to maintain a balance in life The, that that was good, desperately yeah. missing in my life hmm. somehow i was just into the books and nothing was happening but when i came hmm. out of the books and tried to find balance in life i think that's when things started improving a little bit yeah and things started working out for you yes. once you started finding balance in life and i think that is very important you know what happens is a lot of times we are just stuck in the sort of like this rat race right we are always just okay i have to appear for exam or i have to go for a job or whatever right, right. and we forget that you, unless we improve ourselves unless we find ways to rejuvenate our mind 
we cannot expect to grow right. and i think that is very very important and you are i think a living example of an aspirant who has done a lot of things yes. while she was preparing for upsc not only to stay sane but also to develop or grow as a person right yeah and i would like to is, say something yeah. uh, so uh, once i remember i told my father that i wanted to you know work or do something hmm. like because i was feeling very really underconfident sitting at home and then studying and then doing whatever so i told him uh, i'll do some job you know anything then he said uh, that's okay like i'm willing to support you financially when you're at home so why don't you work on yourself hmm. so he was like there's a lot that you need to you know you can work on yourself your personality uh, hmm. you everything including hmm. your physical fitness and everything yeah so he yeah. said you look at that as a project like you 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 looking at upsc as a project also look at your own personality as a project as a project yeah so he was he uh, made sure that i could go to badminton classes because i wanted or mm. things like that so he was very specific that mm. you should i should use the time to work on myself emotionally physically and uh, socially wow your father is a really good mentor <laughs> or coach also right like he knows exactly how to kind of because what happens is uh, i and i have seen this quite often that lot of upsc aspirants they don't understand that fact that exam is just one part of your life is going to be one part of your life right and unless you are happy you are not going to do well in this exam that's unless very somehow yeah you have to be obsessed with this exam obviously you have to work hard but at the same time you have to find other things right you know so when i was like you like to cook you like to play badminton and yoga do yoga i used to when i was preparing for this exam i used to i used to walk a lot i used to go to run you know uh, i used to do other things i used to travel a little bit even if i got in 3 4 months i used to get 2 3 4 days so i used to just you know backpack and go somewhere so that is the way how you kind of uh, do things that you like so i think that's really great that you do that so you said you are the elder you are the oldest in your family yes. siblings wise and you have a brother who is in ias younger brother right so was it the case that in your life was lot of expectations there from you like as an older child you know because i am the oldest i have we are three brothers and my parents always had all i was the most loved one and the most expect expectations right the most expectations and the most love you get so it's kind of <laughs> too much <laughs> yeah so, i think I it's know. similar in my case but uh, expectation wise it's it's funny actually so uh, i kept failing and not giving any results and yet somehow <laughs> year after year their belief in me their confidence in me only grew stronger <laughs> so even though my brother he cleared uh, engineering service with the rank 12 mm. and yet i was the one who was always given more priority <laughs> even though i was not clearing any exam or doing anything and he himself as well he always looked up to me wow yeah they, they, they constantly just decided to unconditionally believe in me that's it yeah and i think that belief comes from somewhere it is not misplaced like i always i'm very sure because your parents have more experience with you than you yourself yes. know about you right they have seen you growing up they have seen what kind of a child you are so they must know you like you're a sincere person or you know all that so uh, that's very that's very nice to hear that uh, you know you grown up like that i guess you know and your brother is working in delhi now Uh, mumbai he's posted in mumbai see oh he's posted in mumbai okay okay i am in mumbai so if he wants to visit he's most welcome <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah so uh, that is how you decided as a person you have come so far right like we've talked about how you appear for the services i want to i will go into the upsc preparation also a little bit so that aspirants can learn about that now i want to know from you how do you see yourself as a future is officer you know what vision you have for yourself or what vision you have for how you are going to grow into into the service because it's a very challenging service so i want to know from you have you thought about it if you might not have thought about it you can tell me uh, that also but yeah right. honestly i have not given it much of a thought all yeah. i keep telling myself is uh, that the platform itself is is amazing and it mm. will do its work all i have to do is be my best when i'm in put in a particular position Right. So for now, that is how I understand. I have to give my hundred percent and yeah. work sincerely, and uh, I, and I learn as I grow because I don't yeah. know much about how it's going to be going ahead. 
but i yeah. know that at least from the past 5 years i realized this that i can persevere learn and grow yeah that's good to hear that's good to hear so you're keeping a very open mind yes. to whatever is going to come and you're going to learn and adopt and uh, you know what makes me see i love to uh, you see you might have seen my youtube channel but i am i'm a kind of a person who keeps thinking and keeps doing things uh, and this is a hobby of mine which i have developed outside work so i feel like now i'm connecting with a lot of younger officers you know who are like 6 years younger to me 7 years like you and i feel like you know i see so much enthusiasm so i feel renewed you know because once you are in service you get tired sometimes <laughs> and you always only deal with seniors you don't deal, deal with juniors much so i always like it's really so i have talked to uh, smriti and i'm mm-hmm. going to talk to some of more of your batchmates so it's like so nice to see that enthusiasm um so are you looking forward to the cold in labasana like in masuri so that is because all my south indian friends hated the cold <laughs> it was you know it is so cold over there so i <laughs> I was once in Shimla uh, in winter and I didn't go out of the room because I'm really <laughs> uncomfortable with the cold. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think I'm looking forward to the freezing cold temperatures. Yeah, but it's a beautiful place. You will really love the atmosphere and everything, you know. So uh, and there are a lot of dogs. I love so I'm a dog lover so there are a lot of dogs there so, and I have a oh, pet yeah. in fact. My pet it's uh, his name is Bucky Labrador. He's uh-huh. been my lifeline for the past three years. That's oh, oh! Tell me about that. Tell me about that. It's a lab. It's a Labrador. Yes, yes, Labrador. Yeah. So, uh, like, that's what I like to do the most: spend time with my pet. So it's when I'm studying, yes, yeah. yes, he's always sitting next to me when I'm studying, or when I want to go for a walk. So yeah, mm. it's like really, really helpful having a pet at home. Yeah. Yeah, it's like such a good companion, you know. They always are with you. They always don't ask you any questions, and they're just there to give you company. You know, that's the best thing about pets. Unconditional love. Yeah, that's that's the best thing about the pets. Um. So now, you know, I want to know from you about, you know, like, um, a few things like in the preparation. You know, like prelims. and then we will talk about a little bit about mains inter- uh, interview part and then we will talk about a little bit about um especially like current affairs and like the newspapers because a lot of students are confused about those things so prelims uh what kind of like since you've gone to three four attempts tell me a few things that you would like students that m- most of people think about but don't do it or most people uh, you know they get maybe misguided because there's so many resources out there right So tell me a little bit more about prelims how would you prepare for that right so uh, i think the most important thing for prelims is practice so many mm. people know that they have to take mock tests for prelims but somehow do not end up taking many or taking as many as they plan so for me i always used to do a uh, two test series uh, so that's 70 tests in total each test series generally has 35 tests and i used to give two months just two months time before actual prelims exam and that's it i would never think about prelims in the rest of the year only that okay. two months but i give my full time for prelims that year got it yeah first is the importance of test series and second is uh, going through the basic uh, textbooks so i went through all the textbooks and i made basic notes from those textbooks and once i made those textbooks it's just revising that notes again and again mm. Mm. and uh, i'm not much on uh, monthlies or compilations and etc i just uh, read uh, one newspaper on a daily basis and okay. i've chosen to stay away from monthly magazines or compilations because they are very overwhelming and they tend to burden us unnecessarily hmm. Hmm. what we actually like, get out of it is very low in my opinion True. if you are regularly following a newspaper and if you find something useful or important from the newspaper i note it down in hmm. the book and then that's it so hmm. these three things i feel are important especially the practice so 80% of your time should be given to uh, writing tests and revising those tests So mm. I have a thumb rule that any prelims test that I take has to be revised thrice before the actual exam. So okay. I had a schedule for every test. When will I attempt the test? When will I revise it the first time? When will I revise it the second time? When will I revise it the third time? 
and mm-hmm. finally i just uh, write on a sheet of paper if there's anything from that paper that i still can't you know remember or which i feel is important that i should revise right before the exam mm-hmm. so everything i put it down on excel sheet uh, and then so that's how so practice and revising those papers once you're done with the basics is what i feel is enough rather than yeah. really going around compilations or monthly maxims or something yeah no that's a very good way to study so what you're saying is first to finish the basics yes. whatever classic texts or whatever preparation you have to do alongside you're doing your newspaper and all right yes. and then once you are only 2 3 months so you're preparing for mains basically right, right. because right. Yes. because the syllabus is same there is not much difference in the syllabus and then once you are close to the prelims 2 3 months you focus just on tests and you do a lot of lot of tests because that will make you get into the practice of what you have right. studied already right, right? so you are and we are re- revising all that and through that you are also revising topics right like right. let's say there is a question on some economic topic you done the test and uh, you got it wrong so you will re- revise it two three times to see whether right. you are getting that topic right correct ha uh, so that's a very good way to study because what happens is students don't know where to start prelims when to start mains they will just start with tests right, right away or they will just start with you know for the entire year they will study for prelims which yes. is not the right way to do it so that's right. a very good way to but how would you do how would you make notes though like were your notes compiled like a big compilation of notes or was it very short notes how did you do that so uh, it, it's generally very short notes so for hmm. prelims uh, generally there are some standard textbooks that we cannot miss like bipin chandra 10th class or 11th class textbook ncrt hmm. yeah so that that has i think 13 or 14 chapters so i had one page each for each of those chapters so hmm. my that book was done in 14 to 15 pages uh, sheets hmm. a four size sheets likewise i had a notes for uh, tamil nadu 11th class ncrt which covers uh, uh, ancient and medieval part so mm. I, again i had 20 odd pages notes for that so mm. from the standard textbooks whichever are there so uh, i made notes from them and once i'm done with them that's it never going back and open those textbooks again mm-hmm. please so for prelims i only relied on this basic textbooks for mains i made syllabus wise notes syllabus topic wise notes. topic wise yeah yeah prelims i thought i should just know the basics of all the subjects from mm. the basic books that everybody seems to be suggesting mm. Mm. the only thing that i did differently was make very short note of those very short notes those, those are very useful right yes. you can just revise even till the last moment if you are right. like want to revise and i think that is a very good advice like definitely every chapter you can condense in one or two pages maximum yes. one page is one and a half pages so if you are not able to condense it that means you've not understood it please read it again yeah. you read until you can condense <laughs> it into one page exactly exactly if you are not condensing it you you are definitely not understanding and what is important of that chapter you are not able to figure out right right yeah yeah that's also so prelims like this and for csat did you do separate practice or did you just like go with it like that only so until my fourth attempt i never did anything for prelims uh, mm. anything for csat so not even mm. like practice any paper and then once i couldn't get uh, marks in fourth attempt yeah. after that i certainly solved some papers to increase my speed so i realized i was very slow for some reason on that day i okay. think uh, practicing is important because csat mm. is getting tougher year after year so when you yeah. have neglected it entirely but mm. there are a uh, very specific type of questions that are still appearing like uh, mm. clock based questions averages uh, data interpretation mm. uh, cube questions calendar questions there yeah. like if you, if you list them down you'll have 10 types of questions and uh, so just un- like try to know how this uh, type of questions are solved you know oh, solved yeah short way. No. there are, there are easy ways to solve these right. questions right. yeah so yeah. once you figure that out uh, that should be fine she said should be fine yeah that's a that's a very great so i was talking with smriti she, she said the same thing she was also having a tough time with csat i think so she just wrote down these topics you know like clocks whatever and they she found ways to just solve those right. questions so one technique two techniques you can solve all yes. of those questions so right. basically you can get 10 questions correct just by doing this very simple exercise and even in comprehension and everything it's i think if your english is decent or if your whatever language you are doing 
it's decent you can easily crack it that way so i think it's about time management in that exam and uh, just not running up behind every question you know that is also important so that's that's a good advice so now prelims uh, like you said you said a very interesting thing you did not go behind compilations yes. right so com- but how so how did you then still because you are right that current affairs compilations output is very low yes you are very right in that but how did you even get over that because it's very hard to get over the fact ki main ye nahi kar raha i am not doing this yeah, right. you know because everyone does it so how did you manage that current affairs preparation so so i think in my five years i kept taking risks and every time my risks somehow paid off so i refer to these monthlies or compilations in my first two attempts and then i soon realized that they became my target as though they are the syllabus themselves yeah because Very i'm good. always reading them revising them underlining them for what like and they also include a lot of unnecessary things from everywhere you just never yeah. ask such obscure things it asks things that we see around us but somehow forget to pay attention yeah so we are busy reading these compilations so uh, that's why i've decided okay let me just try this once and mm. uh, i kept it aside so i started reading newspaper regularly every day and if i find something so i for the newspaper i had prelims uh, notes and mains notes Hmm. So prelims notes, I just wrote any any fact or any small thing. If there's any species mentioned, I would write it. What context it is mentioned? Very very short, like hmm. points, tiny tiny points. Hmm. And then I would I would collect them throughout the year. I would not even revise them the prelims ones because I only focus on prelims in the last two months. So in the last two months, I used to revise whatever I collected. Hmm. And believe me, it won't be more than twenty thirty pages. those chota 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 prelims yes. points that you pick up from newspaper they won't be more than 20 or 30 pages and right. it's easy to do and i used to revise them like 20 30 times hmm. so few they're not like a monthly compilation right right and so that's many a very good way used to like come from those actually come from those points yes. yeah so that's a very smart way to do current affairs right like I feel like so there are two things working for you here. One is that you already studied compilations for two years, so you knew that yes. here, se jada nothing is too right. much is coming. So there is I have already got what I needed, yes. basically, right? So for any new aspirant, I feel like they can read the compilations, but don't make compilations your goal, your right. syllabus, like you said, you know. And the second thing is you did very smart thing with the newspaper. They just write down small, small important points, this species right. or this important event or something like that, and then later on come and revise about that. Yes. Because UPSC is going to ask only that, like you said. Right. 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 That's a very smart way to prepare, and I think that's something new I have learned from you. And that's I think aspirants can use that to save their time also. But, uh, so this is how you made notes. This is how you did your prelims. What about now mains like? uh do, uh what about answer writing what about essay writing what did you do for these things so mains it took me a while to figure out where i was going wrong why i was going wrong because i kept like even in my third attempt when i cleared mains i cleared i was barely above the cutoff very okay. small margin hmm. so clearly that means i didn't still get what it takes to master mains so i was stuck there but uh, uh somehow i realized that i need to focus on the syllabus points whatever right. is mentioned in the syllabus so that mm-hmm. should be the end goal nothing mm-hmm. else syllabus points and previous year's questions so i started reevaluating like do i have enough for every syllabus point or not so i went through every point in the syllabus in every paper so this is the first thing i did and i realized there were so many gaps there were so many areas that i did not have Uh, what i should be like the basic content and i also realized that for some topics i have unnecessary lot so i eliminated all that and i made sure that for each topic one sheet one a4 size sheet mm. so if if it's a separation of powers so then mm. just one sheet so and this time uh, i also made sure that i have conclusion and introduction beforehand for every syllabus topic both in optional and uh, general studies so hmm. uh, so if it's separation of powers so i had some introduction some catchy introduction catchy conclusion and then i wrote very very briefly like what is this 
what are the constitutional provisions why is this important what are the mm. challenges that it's been facing do you have any committee recommendations mm. and conclusion and so all these introductions and conclusion i had them in a, in another sheet like mm. in a word document or so so i used to regularly like mark up these things that i have written mm. so that they mm. stay in my mind Hmm. So, irrespective of what question they ask on separation of powers, my introduction and conclusion would be these. So, hmm. the body I'll write as per the demand of the question. Question, yeah, yeah. So this made my uh, this increased the speed at which I was writing in the actual exam because it wouldn't hmm. take me even a few seconds to write the introduction because hmm. it's already there in my head, and that's a good introduction because I planned and prepared it beforehand. Hmm. Hmm. And likewise for conclusion. So mm. I did this even for anthropology, like every single syllabus topic. So I put them in an Excel sheet. It's a topic here, introduction in the next column, conclusion in the next column for all the things. And I marked them up rigorously. Mm. Mm. So this was the first thing that I uh, focused in this setting. The second thing was how I was writing. So I was very content heavy before and then writing like haphazardly without any mm. intention to score marks just to dump whatever I knew so a friend of mine Nikhil so he like he cleared the exam before so and then he had a look at my answers and then he said this is not how you score this is you're asking him not to give you marks <laughs> like you cannot possibly write like this despite knowing like so much like this mm. is a waste of your knowledge and then with his help, I changed my style of writing. So I started writing in crisp bullet points. I gave more examples. I tried to incorporate flow charts uh, and other things. All the things that uh, toppers keep talking about. But somehow in my case, I needed somebody to clearly pinpoint in my paper uh -huh. and say, your answers are very bad. <laughs> Please write them like this instead. I am, yes. I am grateful that he decided to do that. Yeah. So that's how I improved it. And the third thing is the practice. In my mm. earlier attempts, I did not in practice enough for mains. But this time, mm. like I wrote a lot of exams. So maybe mm. around 30 or 35 exams before prelims and mains. And I was consistently scoring less in GS1 in my previous attempt. So this time I wrote even more uh, tests in GS1. Mm. I, I was like, I, sh I must, I should get at least 100 in this paper. I do not know like what to do. And then the, when when I write a test, again, I analyze it very deeply to see like mm. why every mark was deducted or mm. why was I awarded that mark. Mm. Mm. So that if there's any question coming on the topic ever again, if I know like how to extract. Yeah, yeah. So these three things, uh, I feel, has helped me in mains. And uh, another thing is, again, getting rid of those monthly compilations. <laughs> so what I did was, like for prelims, I had a Word document, GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4. Hmm. So I wrote all the syllabus points there. I hmm. copy-pasted syllabus there. And yeah, arrange them one below another. So whenever I read something from the newspaper, which I felt was relevant for mains, I used to go and put it down uh, under that uh, topic. Under that, yeah. And no copy pasting work. It's only summarizing it and putting it in one or two bullet points. Hmm. So I hmm. told myself that I'm never like, you know, dragging a link here or, you know, pasting a picture. Yeah. That, that doesn't is, work. I never. Useless. Yeah, I'm never coming this. back to open yeah. those links and study anything. Yeah. Summarize, summarize it in two, three points and put it there. Hmm. So this is what I did. So that's how, again, all, the, all of this I was doing from the newspaper only, not any other compilation. Hmm. If hmm. I felt that I needed to know something extra on any particular topic, I used to watch any YouTube video. Hmm. Hmm. Very nice, very nice. I really like the way you've told me right now because everything you said makes a lot of sense right because first of all thanks to your friend who, who <laughs> you know you should definitely give him a treat because he deserves it but otherwise without him you might not have been here right yes definitely uh, and then the second thing is that the fact that i think what you have done really well uh, uma is you have been able to separate the trash 
from what actually is good, what actually is going to help you in the exam. Because posting those links and pictures and articles, you will never read that ever. <laughs> you read it once, you take out the important things and summarize that. And what you did really well, I'm re reiterating this so that students and aspirants who are listening to us remember this, that don't uh, just read books randomly. Look at the syllabus, look at the topics of the syllabus and then read those books accordingly and fit those topics, fit those content in these topics, right? Because that is what is going to come in the exam. So you must have had a very short kind of a, a no, note summary of all the topics, right? Which you can, and I'm sure that helped you a lot. So how did you score in a GS1 this year? Uh, I, I scored, well, I think I scored 119. In 119 oh very nice so you crossed like you got much above 100 marks so <laughs> so your hard work paid off in that how was your gs marks let me ch check exact marks yeah okay so yeah i scored uh 113 in gs1 116 mm. in gs2 hmm 100 in GS3 and 132 in GS4 ethics. You have very good kind of ethics. You have very, very good marks, but you have very good marks in all four. You know, very balanced, very balanced. And in SA, how much did you score? 119 in SA. 119. And you got interview, how much did you score? 187. 187, good marks. So I'm surprised that in SA, like you got good marks in GS, but SA you got a little less, you know, yes. because like 119 even if you had got 130 40 like nice. that would have really yeah like and that's an average like 125 yeah. 30 yeah but anyways it's fine <laughs> it doesn't matter anymore um so tell me about this fact now that uh what was your interview like you know now we have covered sort of mains have we do you want to touch upon anything else for mains or for prelims uh, no, uh, that's it. Not much, but I just want to say that don't be stuck on any strategy. Keep mm. evolving it. Like keep, you know, mm. improving it, improving it. Take risks. Like don't be afraid. Because somebody else is doing something, you don't have to do the same thing. Just yeah. do what feels right for you. Like own up your preparation. Own up your yeah. strategy. It should be yeah. your own. Because even if you fail, at least you'll have the satisfaction. It was my effort. It was my journey. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so that way, like, make it your own. Like, do not like be afraid of doing things differently, innovatively. Yeah, and yeah. Be open to criticism. Open to what others have to say about. Have your, to say. If yeah. somebody is willing to, you know, take a look at your answers, and point out your mistakes, they're doing you a service. Yeah, yeah, true. And coaching institutes will never do that to you. Coaching yeah. institutes will only check your copies and maybe a little bit of things. You know. Yeah. How much? Feedback from coaching institute is not that great, like to be honest, because they are yeah. doing hundreds of students, right? But from one person, you can learn a lot, right? Yes. And like, I like the fact that even if one mark was subtracted from your coach, uh, from your mock mm -hmm. test or one mark were added, you, you should take it carefully because something right. is going in the mind of the teacher right. who's right. right cutting the marks. So that's very important. Um, but now what about the interview? Tell me about the interview. Like you got good marks in the interview. So I want to know about that. So, uh, so again, in my interview, my marks this time are, are also a reflection of the mistakes I made in my previous interview. Mm. I tried to learn from them. So initially, I thought interview was another mains exam in a different format. Mains may you write, here you go and speak. That's the only yeah. difference. Yeah. But it's not. So it's very, <laughs> <laughs> very far from true. So I, that I understood in the second time. So it's about having a conversation, uh, mm. it's about trying to communicate some values from your answers. Mm. So previous, like last time, I prepared a lot, lot of current affairs in too much depth of what, so, like what not. So mm. this time I stuck to my DAF. I made like 20 questions or 25 questions on each of my DAF topics. So mm. I took help of some coaching institutes who made questions on my DAS. So uh, from them, like I picked, okay, these are like good questions on this point. Like I had cooking as a hobby. So these 20 questions I should definitely prepare. Mm. And I prepared answers for all of those. So, mm. so DAS is done. And the second is the current affairs. So what I did for current affairs was I... Uh, made a list of topics like most important topics which will be asked in the uh, interview not everything 
so right. and where did i make this from from i started reading one more newspaper so i read uh, the hindu and the indian express okay. eventually i left hindu and i stuck to just the indian express because that itself is a huge newspaper mm. uh, so and then i made this so at the, i was sure that i should not have more than 50 topics mm. so i will put in those 50 the only the most most uh, relevant topics which i feel will be asked to me in the exam hmm. so this hmm. time around i only prepared 50 topics for hmm. current affairs 50 odd topics hmm. and uh, for these also i prepared in a, a more of a conversation format so what is my opinion on this issue so so basics my opinion basics is also like more, for most things we already know basics because we just yeah. wrote mains so I try to make opinions on all of this, and and then I revised them again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And believe, like you have to believe me, all the questions I got asked in the exam were from my fifty topics. In the I, interview. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, very smart. Yeah. Uh, so because I realized from the previous interview that UPSC asks you whatever you're seeing around you. Yeah. You yeah. want to ask obscure stuff. It's just that we involve ourselves in those obscure stuff and then somehow, you know, spread ourselves too thin. Yeah. And yeah. instead of focusing on the most important things, like I studied about Ukraine conflict. I knew this was a very important thing. I studied that in depth and I formed my opinions from different angles. Hmm. Then hmm. I got asked, like a question asked from that. So this was my current affairs. Earlier was my DAF. And the third thing, was working on my uh, how do I communicate values so I had like five small thumb rules like I have to be confident no matter what I'm saying I have to display confidence because in the, my previous attempt I was I was panicking I was very afraid to answer the phone mm. but this time I made it a point to be very confident and cheerful not to be mm. like so serious and yeah. then uh, be honest like the first question I got asked was what were you doing all these years five years and I answered in a very plain manner that I was making mistakes and learning from them. Mm. So, and and being balanced in opinions. They asked me about caste senses. So, mm. there I put. So, I, so, since I had these five things written on my like five fingers, and I thought, okay, any answer, some one of these values should be seen in that answer. It doesn't matter if I'm giving the best solution to Ukraine conflict. Nobody yeah. knows the best solution. I should not even try to give the best solution there. I should try to give a balanced solution. Mm, right. The value of balance gets put across. Yeah. So these three things, like changing my approach, how I was approaching and preparing, cutting down like unnecessary stuff and focusing on what's in it. So this. Yeah. Cutting down things that don't matter. You know, that is the most important thing. And I think you did that very well for mains also. And you did that for interview also. Because you knew in interview, they focus on these 10, 15 things only, right? Thank because you. whatever is going on outside. And that's very natural. These UPSC, you know, people who are interviewing you, they are not aspirants. They are like <laughs> professionals. They, <laughs> they are not going to read. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you expect them to pick up some random thing, you know, from a compilation. No, it's not. They read a newspaper. They see something in <laughs> news. They're going to ask you that, right? So, and the most big things they're going to ask you because the yeah. big things matter and your opinion on those big things matter. So, um, that's, <laughs> this is common sense. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, we are so kind of, we get so... Uh, Insecure. Kind of, yeah, insecure and so taken away by all this hype that is there around us. We don't focus on the basics. So you did that really well. And I really like the fact that you focus on these values. Like I will I will show these values in my interview, these four or five values, like your confidence, your honesty, because this is a very good structured way of thinking, as well as this is a good way of communicating the real personality that you have. Right? You don't want to Current affairs knowledge is okay, right? That is only going to get you maybe 150, 60 marks. Right. But that another 30, 40 marks you're going to get from, if you want to touch 185, 190 marks, that is going to come from these kind of value yes. explanation or communication, right? So was it, a, but the interview must have been very cordial and all, right? Normally the interviews are very nice. In fact, yeah. my board was even more cordial, I feel. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. They, several like small small jokes in between and then we all like shared a laugh 
Nice, nice. That's very nice. So, which board did you have? Okay, okay. Very nice. That's very good to hear. So, what about social media? Like, you know, like there is a lot of social media out there. When you are an aspirant, uh, being on Instagram, being on Twitter, being on YouTube, YouTube, okay, you can use for positive things also. Uh, but what is your view on that? Were you very active on social media or WhatsApp or everything? Uh, in general, I do not socialize much. And mm-hmm. not like a very extroverted or social person. Mm-hmm. So I tended to stay away from social media. And mm-hmm. it was also a conscious choice because I didn't want to like get anxious looking at other people, them progressing mm-hmm. forward and everything. So I just wanted yeah. to keep myself in my safe space. So I mm-hmm. chose not to join any uh, social media cha- channels. I yeah. used to telegram uh, for preparation and to stay connected with my peer group. Like I yeah. always speak with the peer group. So that, and like, even now I do not have any social media platforms, whatever, whatever <laughs> is there, now, please know that it's fake. I'm not on social media at all. Yeah. I will pass on that message for you. <laughs> People who, <will, laughs> if you want to, if you, if you have a real one, then you can share it with me. I will put, put it for you. But you know, like it's your choice. I don't think social media is necessary. To be honest, like I am on social media, I'm active on social media, but I do YouTube as a hobby. But beyond that, I think social media can be very, even I'm struggling with social media. So so social media can be very addictive. And at the same time, it can waste a lot of your time. You know, like it is designed to, you know, like scrolling, it is designed to keep you hooked. So I think uh, it is something. So are you going to go on social media or no? (laughs) Like Maybe. Maybe sometime in future, but definitely not now because I feel Definitely not the right time to be on social media. Mm. Like just after the result is announced. Like there's a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it took me a lot of effort to convince myself that it's only an exam and that I have life beyond this exam. And now yeah. I think if I join social media now, they will try to make my rank look like larger than life thing. Mm. And then I may forget that it was still an exam. It's only an exam that I cleared. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and there is, yeah, this is an exam and there is a lot more in the yes. future waiting for you. That is the real stuff, right. you know, right. because what you're going to work as an officer is going to define you in the future. Not the rank will stick with you for your life, but it is not something that will, it is done now, right? It is done and dusted sort of. Yeah, no, that's a very matured way of thinking. I And I, I think a lot of aspirants should take that lesson from you because a lot of aspirants waste a lot of time on social media, Twitter, etc. when we are in the aspirant phase, we tend to be very insecure. And social hmm. media plays on these insecurities. It will magnify. Yes. So when you know this is a vulnerable phase where you tend to be vulnerable, where we tend to be underconfident, insecure, then it's better you stay away from it. You can maybe join later. Hmm. So yes. It's a conscious choice. And it's not an easy choice to stay away from social media. You should like pat yourself on the back for staying <laughs> with it. Because it takes effort in today's world to, you know, yeah. just stay away. It is, it is, it is in fact a socially, sort of a social stigma not to be on social media, right? right? Because yeah. a lot of people think it is a norm and norm, a lot of people expect you and with your rank, like if you are top three rank sort of, right? You are expected to be there. But I think you are making a very good decision by not letting social media decide your life, you know, life choices in the future also. And as an officer in the, you should keep a watch on things, but beyond that, it's your choice. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a, that's a good thing. And insecurities, you were telling me about insecurities. I feel like it perpetuates that cycle. You know, you're always stuck in that. You can never come out of that. So that is also the thing. Uh, But that's good self-control, you know. (laughs) I think students should learn from you that that quality. What do you think, you know, um, so I think we have talked about like a lot of things, your interview, your preparation days. We have even talked about your future, like how you envision, you're still thinking about how you want to see yourself. Tell me, now I will hit a lighter tone. I want to know from you, what is one thing you did, something you indulged in after you got the good result? Did you cook yourself something? Did you go out to eat or, you know, something else? I don't know. Uh, Actually, I have not gotten any time to indulge in anything. (laughs) I really want to spend like time with my best friends, but they're writing prelims now. So I cannot disturb them. So now it's like the right time to meet, catch up with them. And then because hmm. we've been together and we've been preparing together and I want to celebrate this with them. So hmm. I'm just waiting to indulge there. 
Yeah, just today let the prelims finish and from tomorrow you can go out and <laughs> yeah. just celebrate as much as you want, right? <laughs> I remember, so I've been to Hyderabad a couple of times. They're really good food, obviously, like one of the best food in India. And there is a really good bakery there. Um, so there is one near the Charminar, which has this tea and Neelofer biscuits. Cafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nilofar, right? Nilofar. Yeah, yeah. Irani, yes. Irani, Irani, I love that place. It's like so good. You just stand and eat biscuits and you know. So I hope you're going to indulge in something like that. Um, now, finally, I want to know from you uh, that do you have any message for any aspirants who are looking, uh, you know, from South, like, you know, from South India, I think aspirants face different challenges than those who are from North India. Uh, or from Northeast. So I want to, uh, I want you to talk a little bit about that maybe. And I want you to, uh, to anything you want to tell aspirants, you know, things that they should keep in mind when they're appearing for this exam. Uh, I think anybody from anywhere, whoever, you know, decides to prepare for this exam, please know what this service is about. Many people jump in without having a complete understanding of what civil servants even do in that hmm. ministry. Yeah. Be very sure of that. Because you're going to commit to that. And mm. secondly, understand the exam. Don't just write exam because somebody is asking you or because it has a good status in the society. So thoroughly understand the exam. Use the syllabus, previous year's questions. Go through the talk for talks or whatever. But get a good grasp on the exam. What it requires to clear. Have a clear uh, strategy. Plan out everything. How many years are you going to give? Do you have a plan B? Everything. Like... Mm jump or enter after having like at least 80% of clarity on what is going to play out in the next few years. Yeah. Hmm. So that way, uh, you know what is going to uh, happen. So it, for instance, I have a habit of planning, like over planning everything. Uh, so I have monthly targets, weekly targets and daily targets. Uh, so like if you ask me, what will I do? Uh, on August 23rd, I will tell you roughly what I would be doing. So what this helped me, how this helped me was, I never used to get overwhelmed by the amount of things I should do. Because for me, what I have to do is what is my target for today. Hmm. So plan things out well. And uh, if you understand the exam and the demand of the exam, it's it's 80% done. Done, and yeah. Please have a sense of balance. This is only an exam at the end of the day. This is not your life. So clearing or not clearing does not determine you know, what kind of a person you are. Yeah. Have, a, have a balance in the sense like, you know, work on your physical fitness, work on your emotional mm. hygiene. These are all important. Uh, connect with your family, open up to your family and your peers. Keep your emotional hygiene properly. So yeah. like, go in a very balanced, uh, like, learn to be happy in short. Yeah. Learn like, to be happy. Use this time to know what is happiness and learn to be happy, happy on a daily basis. Yeah. Like, like you said earlier, like, you know, treat yourself as a project as well. Like you are also a project and how you improve is going to take planning, is going to take balance, like you said. And I think the greatest takeaway from you is like, I think you are a balanced person. So balance is very important in everything. And try to bring that balance in a preparation also, right? So that's awesome. You know, I think our conversation was very good. I learned a lot from you, new things from you. I got to kind of re-look back, re-look at my old, you know, when I qualified for the exam also, right? All those memories come back. <laughs> so that's very nice. Thanks a lot. And uh, if you are in Maharashtra by any chance, if, you are, if a brother, your brother is already here, so if you need any help, let me know. I'll be more than happy. Or if you... Uh, need any help anyways you know just let me know because now you're part of the service so you're part of the family yes thank you so much sir. thank you so much for choosing giving your time to talk of about course, my journey and my preparation thank you so much yeah bye thanks bye